you are our greatest weapon of all. First step in solving any problem is recognizing there is one. It's time we started this. Pain isn't something we thought. All we can ever do for our heroes is remember them. And they gave up two lives. The one they were living in and the one they would have lived. They gave up everything for our country, for us. They pray for freedom and justice. Some veterans not getting the timely care that they need. Less than 1% of Americans serving in uniform. Good news is, is that in recent years, we've made historic investments to boost the VA budget. What is it? Why should we care? We should care about press freedom because... Because we were informed. In democratic societies, free, diverse, and pluralist media enable public debates and are essential checks You don't look power. status. Let's discuss. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome to Vet to Vet podcast, a new episode, the Board of Veterans Appeals. If uh, this is your first time listening, then thanks for coming. And as a short reminder, Vet to Vet is a non-profit educational project dedicated to assist veterans with adjustment to civilian lifestyle and to provide assistance in obtaining your VA and other available benefits uh, that you have earned. Yep. So. Well, before its official creation, Abraham Lincoln uh, defined the VA primary goal in his second inaugural address to take to care for him who shall have borne the battle. The battle. Um, many would agree that VA's secondary goal is to provide veterans their benefits as quickly as efficient as possible. When a, veteran, when a veteran files a new claim, the VA will issue a rating decision that must contain the following. What issues were decided, summary of the evidence considered by the VA, summary of applicable laws and regulations, identification of findings favorable to the claimant, explanation of why the claim was denied, an explanation of how to get evidence used in making the decision, and identification of criteria that must be satisfied to grant service connection or the next higher level of compensation. After this rating decision, you have one year to take action. You are, a, you are to appeal for a higher review at the regional office, file new evidence, or file a notice of disagreement to go to the Board of Veterans' Appeals. So let's go into details how yeah, it works. This one's a little confusing. Mm -hmm. So the Board of Veterans Appeals, or just the board, is a part of the Department of Veterans Affairs, VA, located in Washington, D.C. The board's mission is to conduct hearings and decide appeals properly before the board in a timely manner. Uh, very vague. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, members of the board review benefit claims, determinations made by local VA offices and issue decisions on appeals. These law judges, attorneys experienced in veterans law and in uh, reviewing benefit claims, are the only ones who can issue board decisions. So staff attorneys, also trained in veterans law, review the facts of each appeal and assist uh, the board members. Uh, it's just an extract from the law. So how do I appeal? Yeah, so you can receive help with your claim and or the appeal. Help is available from national and state veterans service organizations, attorneys, or agents recognized by the VA. So regardless of who's helping you, if they're trying to charge you any of that, it's pretty much BS. Make sure they're an agent recognized or an attorney, but charging up front is usually a no-no. Um, you could find more information about obtaining a representative to include a list of VA authorized representatives at www.va.gov backslash VSO. Yeah, also a good site uh, for uh, board itself, bva.va.gov. Mm. So, overview of VA appeals process. So, the pre appeal at a local VA office. So, with us, it would be Los Angel at the Los Angeles Regional Center. Second step, you're looking. You're looking at, after the VA made a decision, you're looking at a notice of disagreement. And that appeal also begins with the local VA office. Then if it gets denied again, you'll get a statement of the case which really explains everything in far greater detail of what's going on. Pay attention to why they say no, 
and counter those arguments. Don't just get mad and just keep throwing evidence at them that you think is working. Look at why they're saying no and fight that part of it. To, to appeal, to continue to the Board of Veterans Appeals, you got to use the um, Form 9, but it's not the Form 9 anymore. It's the VA Form 101-82. So the airborne form for you Army guys out there. And that's how you get to the judges now. So once you file that, the appeal will arrive to the Board of Veterans Appeals. And they'll send you a letter saying, yeah, we've accepted your appeal and we'll give you a, another letter saying when you're go going to meet the judge. Then you go to the board and if a lot of people pick the, vi the video conference. And the video conference is usually done at that local regional office. And for the most part, anyone that I've ever seen, they're really relaxed and they just want to understand why you keep fighting it. And they'll ask you what evidence you've used and why you think that works. It's very relaxed. I know people get nervous because you hear the name judge, but these judges are really pretty decent from what I've seen. And as long as you're being honest and you're telling them what's going on, they will give you an idea of what's missing if you're missing anything. So it's a really good part of the process. It's just a pain to get there. That's the hard part. It takes a while. So once you get to the judge, he'll tell you basically two things. Either I'm going to grant this appeal or I'm going to give you something like 60 days, 90 days to bring me some evidence that will change this decision. And he'll tell you exactly what's missing, he or she, in general. And so just play that and you do all right. But, the, but don't be nervous about it. The judges are really cool. I haven't seen a bad one. So to get back on our little topic, you may appeal any or all the issues in a decision by a local VA office or VA medical center. A VA appeal is separated into two main stages, within the local VA office and to the Board of Veterans Appeals in Washington, D.C. The two most common reasons people appeal are VA denied you benefits for a disability you believe is related to your service, or two, you believe that your disability is more severe than the VA rated it. So for the pre-appeal, to apply for benefits, you have to file a claim with the local VA office or medical facility, either on paper or electronically through eBenefits at www.ebenefits.va.gov. Good luck remembering your password. <laughs> the local VA office makes a decision on your claim and mails it to you. So basically, the whole start of this, you file a claim saying, I think, these things are due to my service and you send them the records and your 214 and all that fun stuff. Then you get a letter from the VA saying we received it, we're working on it. Then you might get a letter saying we need more records, we need more proof. But the major thing you're looking for when you first file a claim is that outside medical doctor for the medical examination. Make sure you go to that. Make sure you take your evidence with you too. If you think you have really solid evidence, take it with you. Most of the time they're not going to want to see it. But if for whatever reason you go there and they say you're not diagnosed, we don't see what you're talking about, at least you have something on you just to be safe. Other than that, you really don't need it. After that, after that medical examination, they'll smash everything together and say yes or no and send you a letter saying why. So the first stop, step of the appeal is if you disagree with all or part of the decision, you file a notice of disagreement. So the new notice of disagreements came with uh, two different styles. You could do the supplemental claim, which is basically the NOD now, from what I remember, or the higher level review, which is kind of like a DRO kind of thing, where it's like, I don't want to talk to you, I want to talk to your boss kind of deal, to have them look over the records again. So most people are going to pick the supplemental claim or what the NOD used to be. And so you basically have a year to date from that denial To argue anything that that you disagree with so that doesn't mean that you put it in the mailbox the same day it means the VA has to receive that within a year so if you do it on the last day you better get to a fax machine or go on e-benefits but put it in the mailbox isn't going to work and you're just going to be spinning in circles but look at why they say no and counter that stuff don't just get mad look at why they say no it could be you missed your medical exam it could be you don't, you, 
you didn't send any records showing you're currently diagnosed. It could be something that you didn't prove that it was connected to your service in some kind of way. So look at the why. Don't just get mad. So when you get ready and you file, file that disagreement, you have a year to make sure that it gets to the VA's hands within a year. And so once you do that, it'll probably take about a year and a half, two years to hear the yes or no. And if you're going on to step two, that means there was a no somewhere. <laughs> and so step two in the VA's process is once you file the notice of disagreement and they still say, too bad, don't see what the hell you're talking about, then you'll get something in the mail called the statement of the case. And that's usually that packet that's like 20, 30 pages long and tells you every little thing that they looked at and what they thought and why. Again, read it, look what they said, look at the evidence they say they used, see if everything's legit in your eyes, and then counter those things. So to argue that, you would want to use the higher level review, or you could use the airborne form, the VA form 10182. If they deny your NOD, you'll get the supplement, uh, the supplement statement of the case, and you'll look at that and you file your disagreement to the Board of Veterans Appeals. So once you do that, you have a choice to have a hearing before a VA law judge. You could tell them just to judge me on the records alone, I don't want to deal with anybody. You could say that I want a video conference, which is usually the most common one. You could actually go to Washington, D.C. if you want to, but you're paying for it. And I only know one guy that did it, and he was successful. Uh, and then the other one is a traveling board, which is the longest thing in the world. It is like waiting for the circus to come into town. So that's usually the one people don't want to use. But once you file that, you'll get a letter from the Board of Veterans Appeals saying they received it and they've accepted it. And then after a while later, you'll get another letter saying you need to show up at the regional office near your town on this date and time. I tell people, go there a few days earlier just to get a vibe for it, especially if you guys got PTSD or anything, because then it kind of makes you feel a little more comfortable on that day than trying to find everything last minute. And so I kind of like stake things out beforehand. So if you can, just go a few days before, meet the people that are supposed to help you out, let them know who you are and what you're doing, get an idea of the parking and everything else, and you should do all right when you go there. And once, the, once you talk to the judge, it's really basic. It's, it's less stressful than traffic court if you've ever been there. <laughs> you know, so it's really not that big of a deal. They're decent people. And once that happens, he'll either say yes or no. The worst part, if you have to get it remanded for something, the remand one takes forever because that's when the judge has to usually send you to another medical exam or something like that to build up whatever's missing, if there is something missing. And so the remands could take a little bit of time. The remand just means that something needs to be fixed and corrected before they make a decision. So there's an op there is an optional step to this thing, and that's usually um, the in-person or video teleconference hearing with the VA law judge at the Board of Veterans Appeals. So the hearing will be scheduled at your local VA office, and the judge is usually in Washington, D.C. And that's usually the most common one. And the good thing about that is if you do have a group that represents you like DAV, uh, VFW, any county service office or state service office, you should do all right, you know, because they'll help back you up. So get to know them. Don't be shy about them. They're here to help you. So in um, step five, after you file a substantive appeal, the local VA office will transfer your appeal to the Board of Veterans Appeals. And uh, then you wait for the decision. Yeah. It, it's not bad. It's just a pain to get there. It's a while to get there. But it's one of the easier steps in the whole process, I think. Just time. Yeah, it's just time. So while you're waiting on that time to get there, keep building your records and looking at why they say no and doing the best you can to counter those little little things 
So when you get a chance to talk to the judge, you could say, look at this is where they messed up. This is where this is wrong. And you have records to back you. So don't just sit here and wait for the letter to come in the mail. Use this time to build your records up. So when it comes to the hearings, you may request an optional personal hearing before an adjudicator who works at your local VA office. So those are the decision review officers or the DROs or the DROs. You know, you'll hear some guys say DRO, some of them call DROs. They're just raiders, you know, but they know what the hell they're doing. They're not just raiders, they're a little bit bigger than that, but yeah. Um, and they'll tell you, they'll look at your claim and kind of give you an idea of what they think is wrong and what you need to be more successful. So it's not a bad thing. They could sit there and sit down with you and give you a real idea of what they think and what's going on with your claim. So it's not a bad idea. And you definitely have that opportunity. A lot of people don't pick it. I don't know why. But the Joes try to help you out. And they really know what they're doing. Um... So due to scheduling demands, you know, for it, even though a lot of people don't pick it, there's not a lot of DROs out there and DROs in any really regional office. So they are kind of limited in seeing everybody. So that can take a while to get to one, but you have that chance. So what to expect at the hearing before a veterans, a veterans uh, law judge? It, it's very informal. I would definitely try to dress up a little bit, you know, just out of respect. But you don't necessarily have to. So if you don't have nice clothes or, you know, you didn't do laundry, it's okay. But yeah, I just dress up a little nice out of respect because it's a judge. But it's, it's informal. It's very informal. Less informal than traffic court, I think. So just, just be honest. Go in there and be honest and tell, you, tell them why you think this is. You should do all right. So make sure you know what the hell you're going to talk about when you get in there and don't start stuttering and have no idea what you're doing. You have the time to prepare for it. And so you will be testifying under oath. Before the beginning of the hearing, the VA judge will ask you to swear or affirm that you'll tell the truth in your testimony. A lot of us being vets, yeah, we pretty much keep our word and we honor those things. So I think that's one reason they do it. Looks like a formality, really, but yeah, it, it happens. But it's not a big deal, just be honest. Um, then you'll be, uh, you'll be offered to, to tell your side of the story. And if you have a representative, he or she will usually ask you uh, questions relevant to your appeal and why you think this is going on. So they're kind of helping you move along the process because some people do get a little nervous and they kind of stammer or they start talking in tangents like I do. So they kind of help you stay on track. So Ruth at CalVet is very awesome at doing her job and keeping you on track and getting things done. So you should tell the VA uh, and the Veterans Law Judge why you believe you deserve the benefits you're seeking and why you think the evidence you submitted supports those facts. It's not just asking people for a handout. You gotta really show them what's going on. So make sure you're diagnosed, make sure it shows the severity, make sure you got the records to back what you're saying and you'll do all right. But it has nothing to do with just, just your word. You gotta have the proof behind it too. And so another good thing when you're talking to a judge is that you're allowed to submit more evidence. And that's what I'm talking about when, while you're waiting. Well, after reviewing and considering every piece of evidence in your file, a veteran's law judge will make a decision on each issue of your appeal. So the decision will grant, remand, or deny, deny each issue. So grant. If an issue is granted, you will receive a decision from your local VA office implementing the decision by the Board of Veterans Appeals. So in case of remand, yeah, so remand means that one or more issues in your appeal is sent back to a local VA office to perform further evidence collection or other uh, procedural reasons. Your appeal will return to the Board of Veterans Appeals when the local VA office complies with the board's remanded instructions. 
A remand usually occurs when the Board of Veterans' Appeals finds that it does not have enough information about an issue in your appeals to make a decision. For exa example, additional medical records and new VA examinations are needed to show the severity of a condition. Little things like that. If they deny you, if an issue is denied and you want to want to pursue further action, you may file a new claim with your local VA office, file a motion asking the Board of Veterans Appeals to reconsider your appeal. There's no time limit to file this motion, but if you're filing a motion to review your appeal again, you want to show that there was a clear and unmistakable error in the decision. So it's not about any new evidence really it's about ev all the evidence that was there and it wasn't reviewed correctly that would have changed the outcome you could file a notice of an appeal with the united states court of appeals for veterans claims you have 120 days from the date of the decision by the board of veterans appeals with the date that's on your letter so not when you get it mm -hmm. So you must file a written notice of appeal that's available at the uscourts.cavc.gov in the form section. And you could send a notice of appeal to the clerk of the court to the clerk of the court of appeals for veterans claims. The filing filing mailing address, email and fax number are available at the same website. So before you receive a letter uh, stating your appeal has been transferred to the Board of Veterans Appeals, you could still call the 1-800-827-1000 number to check the status of your claim or your appeal. You may also be able to check the status of your claim or appeal with eBenefits on eBenefits.va.gov. After you receive a letter stating that your appeal has been transferred to the Board of Veterans Appeals, you can call the 202-632-4. Dash four six two three to check the status of your appeal. You might be able to call that president number that came out too. Hmm. So some uh, statistics. Yeah. So a little bit of the statistics since uh, the fiscal year of two thousand nineteen. And the legacy appeals are sixty nine thousand open claims. The Appeals Modernization Act is about a thousand. In the fiscal year, the hearings that were uh, offered were 34,000. And so the he hearings held through March 2019, the goal was to have 10,600. They actually hit 11,000. And last year alone, they only hit 7,800, almost 7,900. But the hearings canceled postpone or no-shows through March 2019 was 5,406 people. It's kind of a high number. Yeah, looking at the statistics, it uh, uh, looks like uh, it's going to take you, uh, you know, at least seven years in the best best case scenario before your case is uh, going to be heard. Yeah. So you might learn that 1-800 number by heart by that time, I guess. And so keep building, working on your evidence, man. Do the best you can to show what you're doing. Uh, that's it, guys. Uh, so that's an, that was an additional episode for the previous one, uh, previous episode, the uh, new appeals process. Yeah. You guys have any questions, uh, hit us up on YouTube or with our little podcast thing. Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. Better, Facebook, too, of course. So, do you have any book, uh, great movie, uh, stuff to recommend? Um, I've been reading this new comic, The Batman The Last Night on Earth. So, that one's a really good story. So, whether you're into comics or not, if you kind of understand the background of Batman, you'll kind of dig this storyline. It's pretty cool. Um, and, uh, as always, uh, quote or words uh, or wisdom of the day. A hero is someone who has given his or her life to something bigger than oneself. Joseph Campbell. And the guy in the background is uh, Colonel Joe Smith, who uh, I've been able to work under. And 
that's somebody everybody should know if you're from LA. That guy definitely falls under that quote. Um, that's it, folks. Thank you for listening. Until next time, over and out. Thank you. Thank you.